It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends and well, ladies and gentlemen. If you look on that gigantic, sharp, interactive board, it's none other than Chris Pollock of Pollock and Pollock. And Chris Pollock and his company, Pollock and Pollock, have been saving dealers millions and millions of dollars with alternative supplies. And he has a milestone going on at Pollock and Pollock. 50 years. The company is 50 years old, so I want to congratulate Chris for that. And then I want to have a little conversation with him because I believe, and I shared a video on this not too long ago, but I do believe we're heading into another supply chain crisis, and I want to talk to Chris about that and help dealers prepare for that crisis coming soon. Chris, how are you doing, man? And first, I got to say congratulations, 50 years. That's a phenomenal feat. But I also have to tell you that I have this Pollock and Pollock coffee cup sitting on my table that celebrated your 25th anniversary. So obviously we got to get an upgrade. Just just yeah. saying. So Chris, how you doing, buddy? I, I'm doing well, and I have to say that coffee mug's held up pretty good for being 25 years old. That's right? what I'm thinking. It's quality, just like your supplies are. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you're right. It, it is time to get with the times and you know get an upgrade. I'm gonna have to get so a thermos with your name. We'll have to, we'll have, to uh, have some of those have some of those ready for later this year. All right. <laughs> So let me ask you a question, Chris. You know, 50 years in the business, give me the earliest memory that you have of your dad starting this company 50 years ago. Oh, well, I, I do remember it from the beginning because I was actually 10 years old when uh, my father started the business. And uh, I first found out about it. I was actually away at summer camp and uh, my father had written me a letter uh, we had letters back then, no such thing as email. And, oh, yeah. Wow, uh, those were old times. You know, X or anything like that. So you got uh, you, you got things snail mail the old way. And uh, he had mentioned to me that he was going to start his own business and that he was going to name it Pollock and Pollock. And, you know, that at that time, I thought that was pretty cool to have a company with your own name on it. It really sounded great. And, uh, yeah, my father's birthday was in August, so... Uh, after I returned from summer camp, I made I made him a present. I actually made him the uh, first sign for his new company. You with, still got uh, it. it. So <laughs> this is this is actually the thing. first original Pollock and Pollock sign, and uh, that's you can, cool. you can see it's actually you know had some paint on from what the rooms were painted in yeah. his office, and you know, even have some of those three M stickers still there on you the know. back here. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, I've got that memorabilia in my office here, and uh, yeah, it, it's hard to believe that that is uh, that that's fifty years old now. It's amazing, and your dad had some foresight. He knew that you were going to run this company one day. He put your name on it right off the bat. That was great. To send a ten-year-old kid that letter. That must have been pretty pretty exciting stuff. It's it's cool, and yeah, actually, uh, I'll, I'll have to uh, we have a letter that my father wrote to his uh, you know my grandparents his parents when he started the company and uh, we've got that in the archives here we'll be posting that up for our anniversary here to share with everybody because it uh, it tells the original story of the Pollock and Pollock name so I won't get into it but yeah. I'd be happy to throw it up in your uh, you know, send you a PDF of it if you'd like to throw it up in your show notes. Sure, that'd be great because you know, yeah. first of all, it's a you know, it's an amazing story when a company hits a fifty-year marker. That's that's awesome. When it's able to stay in the family and go from generation to generation, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it is the American dream, and you're fulfilling that dream every single day. But you know, Chris, it's a good thing your dad started the company because our friends that sell supply and service print equipment, they need alternatives. They needed them fifty years ago, and they sure as hell need them today. And Recently, I did an episode where I talked about another supply chain crisis coming, and I really believe there probably will be one. It'll have to do with China and how they interact with Taiwan, and I believe a blockade is a real possibility. If they put a blockade in the Straits, that's going to cause another supply chain crisis. So I wanted to share some thoughts on that because I believe dealers really should have probably a 90-day inventory, especially on key supplies. And if you're going to store 90 days worth of inventory for an emergency situation, I don't think you want to tie up a bunch of money. You want to do it at the lowest cost possible, and that's where I believe you—you you know the, the the company Pollock and Pollock could help these folks with that because we got to prepare yeah. for it. You know, I mean, I recently heard a CEO, one of the OEMs, talking about how that'll never happen again. You know, regarding a supply chain crisis, and I'm thinking, well, I don't think I would be that <laughs> that confident in that not happening again. So I I think it's oh you know. Uh, never is never is a strong word. Like yeah. they always have the motto, never 
never say never. And, you know, I remember you bringing up this, uh, this idea of the blockade as a potential supply chain issue. And, uh, yeah, which was interesting. I had never thought about that before. And I think, you know, something like that did happen. I think one of the things that the dealers have going for them a little bit is that they do have the time to prepare mm -hmm. for it. Uh, I know from the last supply, supply chain crisis we had, uh, it was going on. And when we talked with dealers, there was a, a lot of denial that nothing mm -hmm. was happening. And then it wasn't until reality hit and it was too late. Uh, people were scrambling and there was a lot of panic buying. And then eventually they were overloaded with inventory. So I, I think this last supply chain crisis only, you know, maybe just a little under two years ago from beginning, mm -hmm that it started is really fresh in everyone's memory. And, uh, you know, this blockade thing that you're discussing of Taiwan, how that could disrupt a lot of things here. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I think that the dealers have a little bit of time to prepare and think about this before something like that may actually happen. Uh, I think we're, what are we, less than eight months away from an election cycle. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I would say in the near future, you know, usually when you have things like this going on and there's going to be an election year, you, usually uh, countries are trying to play a little nice because they want to make sure which administration they're going to work with mm -hmm. or know where it's going. So maybe this is kind of a little bit of a, a lag time that uh, you can do those things as you, as, you, as you talk about. Focus on what are the important items that you, you need to have you know, more than just one month's worth of stock of that you've got to have that that buffer there if there are any types of delays of any any type. So this would be the time to review that would be be now so that if uh, something does happen before this year is over here, you you're prepared. Uh, when you don't prepare for something like that, if you wait until it happens, uh, it, it's going to be too late. you you won't have. Uh, you won't have enough time to uh, to react and have that safety stock available for well, you. Well, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of things to prepare for. I mean, we're talking about a blockade or, or a supply chain crisis, but what happens if an OEM gets pressured financially and goes away, as an example? I mean, there's so many things. Uh, we, we've got the issue going on with all of Nine Star subsidies. And that's and, and yeah. that's and that's happened before. I can tell you yeah, that exactly. we actually we actually experienced that. In the early days of Pollock and Pollock, mm -hmm. uh, uh, most people in the industry now, unless they've been around for as long as I have, would not would uh, remember that there was actually an OEM called Saxon Business Systems. Mm -hmm. And in the late 70s, I think it was 1979, they went bankrupt, mm -hmm. and we 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 were actually supplying toner to these Saxon dealers. And when Saxon went bankrupt, uh, these dealers could not get toner anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we, we were one of the sole sources for them to be able to get toner. And they were very happy that we were around here. And uh, a lot of those dealerships that we worked with back in the late 70s through that crisis still do business with us today. Well, I just think, you know, a lot of times we don't want to face the hard things to think about, number one, especially in our industry. But it, but we need to. I mean, we've got a lot of crap going on. I mean, it, we, you know, we've been pretty much turning a blind eye to the whole nine star crisis as an industry for the most part. Now we just saw where nine star lost their preliminary injunction. So it's the ban holds. There's going to be a lot of issues from that. You know, we've got, yeah. uh, you know, you've, you've seen the reporting regarding, you know, Conica and Ulta and their financial situation. Who knows what's going to happen with that? We have a, there's a, there's, that's, there's and that's just where so a company many like different Pollock things. And Pollock can yeah. help supplement some of your supply and demand needs. And again, too, it's kind of like the supply chain crisis. Uh, you can't necessarily wait until trouble is happening. Mm -hmm. you know, this is a good time to prepare and look at where are some alternatives that can help your help your business be more profitable and uh, supplement the OEM business that you uh, that you usually that you usually do. Uh, we've been working with many dealers this year. I think a, a big frustration that they've had over this past year is that 2023 was a good year for them. Mm -hmm. uh, although when it comes to supplies, uh, it, you know, it was mainly driven through them having placing record equipment. But when it comes to the supplies, 
their customers are printing less and been frustrated that their targets from the OEMs reflect on the supplies more that people are printing like they used to, like they used to, which isn't happening at all. And many dealers are really struggling to hit their target numbers with the OEMs and miss out on any incentive plans. And at Pollack and Pollack, we're able to help do that work for you where we can put together the data and show you where we can help and what type of savings we can bring. And while we've been doing that with the dealers this year, we've really been pulling the covers off of these OEM incentive programs. People have just never taken the time to do the math. And when we've done the math from them, we're coming out and seeing that when they can work on buying products from Pollack and Pollack, the dealers are saving, you know, sometimes more than three times what they get back in the OEM credits. Yeah, I think sometimes it becomes the status quo. Whether you work with us or not, or still choose to work with the OEM, you've really got to take the time out and do the math. And if you're busy and shorthanded with people, contact us at Pollack and Pollack. We can help you with gathering that data and put it together for you and show you what type of results can happen. And then it's up to you to see if you want to explore it further. Well, you've been saving people money for 50 years. Your dad, now you. And at the end of the day, we need to be prepared for what could happen because the probabilities of more disasters happening are pretty eminent, in my opinion. And we don't need to just sit on our laurels. And I agree with you on this rebate thing. I think a lot of times we just get complacent. Oh, it's just easy to do the rebates. And it, or, you know, let's buy all this stuff so we can get a rebate. But when you really do the math, you find out, well, sh I'm glad I was buying the Pollock and Pollock toner because I made more money. Well, Chris, yes. I want to just congratulate you on 50 years. That's phenomenal. And I'm going to be seeing you in, in April. There's a BTA meeting coming up I'm going to go to. I'll see you there. So is there anything okay. you want to add to the for the audience before we end this? Um, no, like I said, if, uh, if Pollock and Pollock can help you anyway, reach out, have a conversation with us. And uh, remember, too, that we're changing our clocks this weekend. So don't forget that. Oh, I, didn't, I forgot all about that already. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Because everybody watching me, and now you, knows this, status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.